this. Great. Okay. So welcome to the uh, careers webinar. So this is um, careers in um, the BCMB concentration. And we're really lucky to have um, some fantastic alumni that are, were willing to come back and tell us about their current careers. And so with no further ado, I'll let them all go around and, and introduce themselves. So Brandon, you're the first one on my screen. Why don't you go ahead and get started? Hi, I'm Brandon Braswell. Uh, did a biology with a specialization in microscopy at Central Michigan University. I'm currently at the Whitehead Institute as the imaging specialist. And I'm looking, uh, I actually have my final interview for Zeiss product application specialist um, in a few days. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Kelsey? Hi, I'm Kelsey. I graduated in 2020 of spring right when COVID started. So my last semester was online, but I, went for a degree in biology with a concentration in microscopy, and I am now an account manager for high-tech microscopy, partnered with Zoe, so I, I am an account manager. I sell microscopes, and I also go out and install them. Awesome. Uh, okay, Freddie Lee? Hi, I'm Freddie. Uh, I graduated from CMU in 2011 uh, with a BS in uh, biomedical sciences, if I remember correctly. It's been a while. Um, I went on to do a PhD at Indiana University in microbiology and then a postdoc at Tufts University for two or three years. And then I sort of transitioned to industry. And currently, I'm a senior scientist at Series Therapeutics, uh, which is a company that is working to develop um, microbiome targeted solutions for uh, like UC, Crohn's, and other uh, digestive issues. Very cool. Uh, Laurel Viber. Hi, I'm Laurel. Um, I won't tell you the year I graduated <laughs> a really long time ago. I was Greg's, Dr. Cloris's first grad student, if that tells you anything. <laughs> um, and so I did my research in microbiology, and I am currently a microbiologist at the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services Public Health Lab. Great. And then last but not least, Chris Finch. Hey there. Um, so my position, I'm the community out or community education and outreach section manager at the Division of Environmental Health. I work at the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, so the state health department. I would say my job in a nutshell is I take um, the science that our toxicologists and epidemiologists put together and I put it in plain language. Uh, so everyday residents can take steps to, or can make informed decisions on how they want to protect their health or not. Yeah. So, um, so I started this position about six months ago. Um, prior to that last 10 years, I've uh, worked in communicable disease on HIV and STI uh, projects throughout the states. Um, so kind of moved from communicable disease into environmental health. And I you know, I think uh, CMU provided a lot of really interesting experiences with a broad range of um, yeah, broad range of experiences to get here. Um, and I graduated from CMU in 2010 with a biology degree. I believe it was pre-grad, pre-professional, uh, if that's still a thing. Um, Is that a thing? <laughs> we, we have some different majors now. <laughs> <laughs> that's several majors ago. <laughs> Have you really been gone 12 years? Oh. <laughs> that makes me feel old. So uh, technically it's 10 years. I did stick around for two years in grad school, um, but then I quietly left in the night uh, one evening and didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to kind of start off with a question um, kind of geared towards people maybe considering um, careers. Um, and so why did you... Uh, choose the career path that you chose like what what motivated you to go this route and then um what do you like most about your job and anyone can jump right in uh sure i'll jump in um, so I've always been extremely interested in bacteria and viruses and water and how they impact people. 
Um, so I chose a, a job in public health because I got to think about how disease and environmental contaminants impact our everyday lives um, and how I could use the best available science in order to give people options to have the best health outcomes. Um, so the thing I really enjoy about my job is I know decisions and things I do uh, have a positive impact on Michiganders uh, every day. Uh, I guess I can go next. Cool. Uh, also, can everyone hear me with these headphones on? Uh, okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, uh, I was in grad school for a bit of time, and then I came here to Whitehead. Uh, luckily, here at Whitehead, I was able to still continue research. I'm currently working on three papers with the Rudolf Janisch lab, uh, so hopefully get those out soon. Um, but most I love about my job is it's a lot about finding solutions to the problems that our users have. Uh, as working in a core facility, most of that comes with imaging, uh, but I've also diversified now into doing a lot of uh, data analysis. So I'm caught up on about five different data analysis softwares that we use around here. Um, and now that's given me the opportunity to become hopefully the imaging specialist at Zeiss covering uh, the wide array of microscopes that they use and being product uh, support for them as well. Laurel, you look like you wanted to say something. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> um, what was the first part of the question? How just why why you wanted to do the job that you do and what do you like most about it? You don't have to answer both. Oh, okay. Um, well, I really knew I wanted to do something in the lab. Um, so, uh, being it not necessarily public health, actually, I didn't even know, and probably maybe a lot of you now know about public health labs, but when I first started 15 years ago, I didn't even know we had a state lab. <laughs> and so I kind of got into that, um, just by happenstance, by getting a job there. And I was like, oh, wow, look at all this cool stuff that they do. And I really like the molecular side of um, kind of bacteria and disease. So uh, I guess that would be one of my favorite parts of the job is doing, seeing those changes that happen really fast in the technology and that's come about in the last 15 years is really, really astounding. All right, I will go. Um, so, yeah, I think my path to where I'm currently at is a bit complicated because um, initially um, I was definitely planning to be more in academia, especially as a PhD graduate. That's sort of the direction that people are typically trained towards. Um, but I moved to Boston for my postdoc and Boston is a major hub for a lot of biotech companies and startups. And so it's, tantalizing to get into that area um, of science. It's sort of different than what I thought I would get into, but a lot of my passions still translate over into industry. And um, through my like four years in industry, it's really actually expanded my understanding of science and then how it, how's it, how's it applicable to like others outside of just the scientific community, like the greater community to solve certain solutions. Um, and so that's sort of, how I got to where I am today is, is through that sort of just general interest of science biology and especially of microbiomes. Um, and what was the other part? Something I like about my job. Um, I like doing science. That's always been my love is the science. That's what sort of keeps me interested in everything that I do. Um, I'm currently sort of middle management, so I'm not in the lab as much, but I get to sort of mentor folks in the lab, outside of the lab, and still get to dabble in lab stuff from time to time. So I would say that the science has always been the the driver in my my decision making and my current job. Okay, last but not least, Kelsey. All right, so mine's a little bit different too. I started out as a working in a lab as a research technician doing microscopy techniques for University of Michigan out down in Ann Arbor. So I was working in the pathology lab down there connected to the hospital. I was doing a lot of microscopy for uh, grants, DOD projects, 
Uh, I was doing kidney renal biopsies, cutting, sectioning, uh, doing immunohistochemistry staining, all that kind of like H and E staining that we learned in light microscopy. And I did, I've been there. I was there for like since like almost a year and a half, but I realized it wasn't my thing being in a lab because I was the only one in my lab hired. So it's kind of like long eight hour days. So then I recently found my new job working through Zeiss selling microscopes as an account manager. And I actually really like this. I can work remotely. And when I need to go install like microscopes, it's really nice to go explore Michigan as my territory, going around and just meeting new customers and like get, being able to help people and having the background with microscopy, like working in a lab. So I know like what kind of microscopes they need, like an inverted microscope, a compound. It's really fun, like especially building the microscopes, like going out into the lab and building building them like piece by piece, putting the pieces together. So that's probably like my favorite part. It's kind of like playing with Legos, like just screwing like the pieces together. It's really fun. <laughs> you made me want to like build a microscope. Yeah. With that. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna pause real quick and, and give the students an opportunity. Does anyone have a question that they would like to ask our panel? Okay, I t if, if you think of a question, please raise your hand. I'm gonna keep firing them. And if you don't want to say it out loud, go ahead and type it into the chat. Um, so one more chance, anyone want to unmute? I'm really good at awkward long pauses. Okay, so I'm going to ask another question. Um, and I think this is a question I get a lot. Um, so if you have been, if you're involved in hiring for your company, what kind of, what kind of skills are you looking for people to have? Um, and, and what are these skills that really set set um, a person apart? And if you're if you're not necessarily involved in hiring, what are the skills that you really appreciate in, in colleagues, right? So in new people brought in. So if, in, if anyone feels like they could answer that question, please let us know. Yeah, I can. <laughs> Uh, so we are currently in the process for hiring a new imaging specialist here at the tech facility. Uh, currently, what we're looking for is somebody that can interact well with a bunch of different users on multiple different levels from very basic to advanced level, uh, not only in terms of microscope, uh, but also a little bit of biology as well. Um, but we do cover biology, chemist labs, uh, physics labs as well. Um, but really just being able to talk to people is what we look for. And then below that is starting to be your specializations. Um, but when you're interacting with this many people, uh, this is tend to be what they're looking for. Um, so I recently have been a part of several sort of hiring um, sessions that we've had in, 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 at Series Therapeutics. And one of them was a direct report for, for me. And I would say, one, and I guess I didn't really say what I do. So I'm in the molecular um, technologies group, which is a team that basically designs, develops, um, verifies, validates different kinds of um, DNA or RNA based sort of assays. Um, some of this work is done internally, and then some of this work is also done with vendors or CROs. So those are company, other companies that we work with to have certain um, asks completed for us if we don't have the bandwidth to do it. So for example, one of the positions that I was looking for uh, was like a, an RA or a research associate level, which is, that's typically someone who would be like recently graduating from a BS or even a master's degree. Um, but typically we're looking for skills that, you know, basic PCR skills, very like um, fundamental um, skills that you can learn in a laboratory, um, either through your courses or, you know, more intimately, if you've done some kind of independent research with a faculty at a university or somewhere else. Overall, I saw you nod with, with, uh, faculty, um, experience or, or do you see similar, do you look for similar things? Yes, we look for very similar things, you know, basic PCR skills, basic laboratory skills we look for. Um, the public health lab actually in Michigan is a little different from maybe other 
areas in clinical laboratory science, you do not need an accreditation to work in the lab in Michigan, like an ASCP or some kind of accreditation that you would in a hospital setting. A lot of my co colleagues do have them. Um, a lot of them, it's probably about 50-50 split. Um, a lot of them are like me that just have a master's or some advanced degree that we've gotten research and hands-on with that type of um, skill, those type of skills. Um, but the main thing that we really look for is teamwork because in the type of public health setting, uh, you are always going to be in a team. You're never going to be um, the only one who knows how to do something. You always wanna have someone behind you that can take over whenever you need something someone to help you with that. So for sure, we look for a lot of teamwork skills and how they would fit into the team that they would be working with. I guess I can jump in as well. Um, so um, for, for my area, again, communication or uh, community education outreach, you know, really looking for people that have good people skills, right? That are able to have a conversation with folks. Um, and the like, the one thing that is really nice to have on my team is people that understand science and then can communicate that to other individuals. I think that's a very unique skill set. Um, I work with a lot of toxicologists and epidemiologists um, that they are fantastic at their job, um, but I would not want them to explain to my mother um, what the risk is um, in their drinking water. Um, so having people that are able to uh, understand what that toxicologist is trying to say to them and put it in plain language and then effectively communicate that plain language to others um, is crucial. And then, you know, we do a lot of project management. There are um, unfortunately environmental contamination events throughout the state that, you know, pretty frequently. Um, and there are people, uh, you know, a core team of individuals um, that work together in order to solve that problem from toxicology, epidemiologists, and, and engagement with community members. Um, so yeah, being able to work well on a team, manage data and um, relationships, um, and again, being able to take that science and put it in plain language so it's usable for the public is, I don't know, I'm looking for unicorns. Um, so if you guys have any, please, please send it my way. <clears throat> So I don't want to dominate all the questions. Steve, Eric, Greg, did you want to jump in with them? Because I have a long list of things my students ask me all the time, and I, ha I have people I can ask. <laughs> Actually, I want to, um, so I know um, Kelsey kind of touched on her steps to where she is right now. And I know just from knowing them, you know, Freddie, if you guys wouldn't mind describing what you like your I know you described your path, but like what specifically you did because Freddie worked with honeybees, you know, to get where he is now. Laurel started with a biodefense lab or biodefense, you know, same place. Chris was in a STI lab, right? Like doing so. I mean, you guys definitely aren't doing what you stepped out of the door here and started doing. Um, and then same with Brandon, um, if you guys wouldn't mind explaining to the students, okay, this is what I started doing and then I did this and I did this and now here I am doing what I'm doing. Yeah, I can start that. Uh, so I started doing research at the beginning of my junior year in the ecology lab. Uh, then I started working for uh, Dr. Linton in his lab, and I did that finishing my degree. Uh, from there, I was a lab technician in the immunology lab, and then I was in grad school for neurobiology, uh, and then now I'm here as the imaging specialist. Um, I guess I can go. Um, so, like Greg said, I sort of gave a little, like, brief synopsis earlier of sort of my trajectory, but Obviously, there's a lot more details there that people don't know about unless they know me. But um, so I actually didn't get into research like in a lab until I was like a fourth year. I graduated in five years. 
Um, and that was through the McNair Scholars Program um, at CMU. And Greg was my um, mentor in that process. And that was really my first sort of like introduction into a lab besides like the general introductory like microbiology courses that we take at um, CMU. Um, and that sort of gave me a little bit more of, of an understanding of like, okay, I think I really want to stay in the microbiology microbiology area of things. Um, and then from there, the McNair program sort of prepares you and like gets you ready to then apply for graduate school, which I did and got accepted into Indiana University. And that's where I sort of really got a much more deeper understanding of like microbiome research. Um, and that was through studying the gut microbiome of the European honeybee. And so all of my PhD work was on um, that specific topic. And that really was like the genesis for a lot of my, my passion for micro microbiology in the context of like a host and not necessarily a microbe on its own. And so um, from there, you know, that was like a five year process of getting my PhD. Um, lots of ups and downs. This is pretty typical of a PhD. Um, and then eventually I, you know, finished, which was like, you know, a very um, happy and like, you know, you just all of the fruits sort of you get to harvest at the end of that process. And it was like a really great experience. Um, and so from there, I then went on to to further sort of harness and like sharpen some of my skills that I had in microbiome research to then go on to a postdoc at Tufts University, where I studied the microbiome of planaria, which are these flatworms that are known for like their regenerative abilities. But I was studying it in the context of how do micro, how does its microbiome impact regeneration? And so each sort of like step that I took, I certainly was like in a new area of science that I had not really necessarily been accustomed to and had to learn new methods, new techniques, or develop new methods and techniques. Um, and then jumping into like industry, that was just, I got lucky sort of, and I found a company that was a startup that was working on um, developing um, pest control products through harnessing what we know about insects microbiomes and how important insects and microbes have sort of like intimate in relationships and those those relationships can impact the health of insects. And so that company was specifically like targeting the microbiome of insects to mediate pest control for like agriculture. And then from there, I sort of jumped into humans, which is another whole system. And uh, is it's very different because there's lots of clinical stuff and lots of clinical validations and trials. And there's a lot there that when I started this position, which I've only been in for about a year, um, I didn't know a lot, but, you know, you sort of just like jump off and go into the new area, take what you know, and then you like learn new techniques and new methods, and then usually you end up okay. That I just want to comment. That sounds, I want to know more about all of these um, projects. <laughs> you really you have a skill of piquing some curiosity. There are a couple of publications out there, so yeah. <laughs> Um, does Kelsey or Laurel want to go next? I don't want to, like all the men to go first. It just feels wrong. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'll go. So I started right, right, right when COVID like was starting to ease up from the lockdown. I graduated and there wasn't very many jobs available at the time. So I took this job through U of M, even though I was commuting an hour every day because I was starting to pay off student loans. It was a long long eight hours plus two hours driving there and back. So I did that for the whole first like year that I was there working. And eventually I was able to pay off all my student loans and then I got into this new position. So I took like a big journey going from a lab and then basically just learning all the skills. Like I learned like techniques that I didn't really learn kind of like tips and techniques for like uh, sectioning I learned on my own for over there. Uh, I learned a lot of a IHC on my own too over there at U of M Ann Arbor. And then like once I didn't really like the lab setting because I was by myself in the lab, 
I kind of just like switched over to sales. So like for the interview process, as long as you can have a conversation with a person, you're, you're good to go for to like sell something. And another like question they asked, have you used a microscope? And basically I had the microscope skills. I just need the sales, tech, uh, sales, customer service training. So I getting the training I need to communicate with customers. And other than that, I have the experience of being in a lab. I understand what experiments are going on, what microscopes are used for each one. And like all of our microscopes through Zeiss are made in Germany and they are tailored, they're made in Germany in the factory and they are tailored to your needs. So specifically we can get certain objectives for you. We can uh, change a lot of different things on the microscope for you to get it to where you need it. And like, in an account manager, it's really fun. Like you get to like make up the quotes, you talk to customers, see what their projects are. And then eventually like the best part is like going out there, driving to like Michigan, wherever the, if it's a college or like a lot of material sciences that I deal with for BNC stands that I sell. It's pretty fun putting the microscopes together. Like in my interview, I got asked like, how do you feel about building microscopes? That's part of the job. And I was like, oh, that's fun. It sounds fun because it's like building microscopes. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this. So like I enjoy going out there and the customers are so nice and very, very nice. The guy at Van Andel, I sent out the job posting to Dr. Linton. He is hiring for the Van Andel Institute in Grand Rapids for a TEM technician. And I told him I have connections through CMU that there are CMU grads graduating from my microscopy program. And I would be able to give out his contact information to help him out. He's been having a hard time getting uh, the position filled over there. So an account manager is really fun. You make a lot of good, great friends and lifelong friendships throughout the process. You have customers that will come back and they just, it's really fun. I feel like I'm staring down Laurel right now. Do you want to go? <laughs> Do you want me to go? Okay, I'll go. Um, so I, I think, Greg, I would start off with that, uh, your question by just saying, like, it's okay to not know what you want out of life. Um, I am, what, 12 years out of, uh, out of uh, undergrad. I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Um, so, you know, uh, imposter syndrome is also very real. Uh, and people should, like, Google that if you don't know. Uh, it's like, like, should I be here? Am I the right person for this job? Uh, and you, and you do deserve to be there. Like, you, you know your stuff. And if you don't, you know critical thinking skills. So you'll figure it out. Um, so you know, my uh, path. Um, I, I started at Central in 2006. I had the the pleasure of actually living in the residential, the Science and Tech Residential College, uh, when I went to CMU. Um, and it made it so I got to meet a lot of fantastic faculty at CMU, which uh, got me some ends into working in some laboratories while I was there. I actually worked for Dr. Seafelt, did bird surveys on Beaver Island for three summers as an undergrad. Uh, for graduate school, I actually worked in Dr. Alm's lab uh, doing uh, fecal contaminated uh, contamination indicators um, like E. coli and gastrointestinal pathogen research. Um, while I was doing that project, I worked with Don Uzarski or Dr. Don Uzarski on his coastal wetland research. So I got a lot of experiences doing vegetation surveys, um, invertebrate, fish, uh, and water chemistry analysis um, while I was there. I also like taught med micro and microbiology laboratories while at CMU, which was like a really great experience. And I think actually like that was the big thing. Like those laboratories and then teaching those laboratories really helped me land my first job um, out of uh, college um, when somebody on Facebook that I briefly knew uh, an undergrad posted, we're looking for somebody um, with a bachelor's of science in microbiology. You know, I'm like, oh, hey, I, uh, I think I can do that. Um, so I guess like tip one, uh, continue to be kind to your peers and your acquaintances. Uh, because those people will let you know when positions are available because you cannot Google everything or know where to find everything. And so people will post things and let you know about opportunities. Um, and maybe one will come up that you're interested in applying for. So I, uh, I got a job working for Wayne State University School of Medicine um, out of Central, where I supervised the HIV STI laboratory. 
um, we did um, what I call stat uh, testing. So it's like most of the tests are done in under 15 minutes for HIV, um, syphilis, pregnancy tests, um, trichomonas, uh, gram staining for uh, uh, gonorrhea. Um, and then we process and package off anything that we couldn't do there for PCR or NAT testing to the state laboratory. Um, you know, so after that experience, I actually was able to get a job at the state of Michigan where I managed the HIV prevention programs uh, for what five years, I think I did that for, um, where I implemented uh, programs throughout the state to help disrupt HIV transmission. Um, uh, if my family asked me what I did, I was a glorified accountant who knew how to write grants <laughs> and then get money out the door and provide technical assistance to those agencies to uh, implement those activities. Um, and then from there, I uh, now I am I moved up in management to, to middle management now um, where I oversee health educators um, and outreach specialists who, again, talk about science and how we know there's potential harm in an area and what people can do to protect themselves. Um, I guess that's kind of like, I guess, my, my journey in a nutshell. Uh, I think I've bounced around quite a bit in a variety of subjects. Um, and I don't know, you don't need, and I think that was beneficial, right? Not specializing and having all sorts of weird and different experiences and interests, I think were really beneficial. It sounds like Freddie uh, did, did uh, a little bit of similar stuff, right? Just bounced around and mostly like where I landed, right? <laughs> okay, I'll go last. <laughs> okay, so um, being in Greg's lab, Dr. Polaris' lab, um, it, we did majority of what we did was um, environmental microbiology, but a lot of it was looking at, you know, DNA and looking at the kind of kinds of, um, you know, um, we were looking at their um, parts of their DNA and parts of their, and we were setting up sequencing and things like that. So that really helped me doing PCR and things like that to get into the state lab where we were doing, um, we were looking for, we are in environmental, looking at environmental samples down in Detroit for um, agents of bioterrorism um, or select agents. So there's a program down in Detroit and in all the major cities in the United States have this program. They're run through the Department of the Defense um, so it's run through the, the federal government. That's where it's funded from. Um, and it looks for agents of bioterrorism that could potentially be released into the environment. And it's just screening for them every day. So it's basically a PCR screen. So really working in Greg's lab, doing PCR all the time, helped me get my foot in the door there. So this program is run out of the public health lab. So we're working side by side with the state laboratory, um, public health microbiologists in all aspects. Um, so that really helped me get my foot in the door there. And then I saw what was going on there, which is a whole gamut of things. And one of the things that I did while I was there was I said, hey, so and so, I think what you're doing is cool. Can I watch you? Can you show me this? And they were happy to sh to you know show me different things, all the things that they did in the lab. Like we got Chris's samples from the STDs and the STIs, and I asked, "Can I learn how to do that?" And they were happy to show me. So that's one of the things that I really, um, really, I guess, made me stand out when the state positions opened, like the current position I, I'm in, is because I asked, can you show me this? Can I do this? Um, and they, you know, management sees that and coworkers see that you're willing to work and learn new things. And um, so they, that really, that's what, I, I feel like that's really what 
um, put me apart. So when jobs opened up um, and were available. So in my current job, um, we are doing, um, we are the molecular surveillance team for the whole United States for um, tuberculosis. So we have, we cover the whole United States and we do um, what's known as conventional genotyping. And we also do next generation sequencing or um, WGS whole genome sequencing on all the tuberculosis cases in the United States. So um, yeah, so all those steps in really asking all your fellow colleagues, show you how to, what to do, how to do things, um, learn, like to learn new things. It, it got me where I am. Yeah, I think showing initiative goes a long way. We we just formed an industry board and they would not stop talking about how important it is that people are willing to jump in and um, show initiative. And I think this helps you climb the ladder. So I'm glad to hear that story actually in action from our alum. <laughs> any, que okay, so ne any question, we'll take a pause and see if there's any questions from from our students. Dr. Gorsuch, Dr. Linton, did you have any, uh, did you have a question you wanted to ask? I, I don't know if you asked this earlier. I had to step away from my desk for a couple minutes. So if you've already asked it, that's fine. Um, it's, it's kind of a general based question, but what what is something that you wish, or what is something you would tell a freshman that they should be doing sometime during their college year, but maybe even the freshman year? that maybe you did do and you really thought it was a great idea or maybe something that you didn't do that you wish you would have done? Great question. I don't want to be the first one to go again. Does anyone want to go? Sure. So I, um, I, I mentioned briefly earlier that I was part of the science and tech uh, residential college. Um, and so my freshman year, uh, I don't, I think if I had not been in that, I would not have talked to faculty outside of lecture. And actually, I probably wouldn't even talk to them in lecture, um, to be frank, right? Like, just, I'm going to sit back here, I'm going to do my work, and I'm not going to engage with you. Um, and so I think that was really beneficial um, in understanding, you know, what I needed to do to be successful in undergrad. Um, and then, you know, I would like to hit, so anyway, I would, I would, say like get to know your faculty members at the university um you know like there's a lot of really really smart people there that have a bunch of different experiences um you know like and if one person's experiences don't work out for you or it's not like the trajectory you see yourself going there's someone else there that probably has some shared life experiences or a direction that you're interested in going um and then the, the second thing again is is Networking is so important um, for not only your first job, but also your subsequent positions. Um, and so I, I would say is like get to know your 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 counterparts that are interested in things that you're interested in in particular, um, because you know eventually one of you hopefully is going to land that job that you guys are both interested in, and the other one's going to help you help you get in the door somewhere. So I think those would be my two words of wisdom to to uh, those freshmen. Um, I just want to piggyback off of that um, and just say, so we're all saying here like, oh, you should go talk to the faculty. But like as an undergrad, I thought that was petrifying and like never really even could get myself to do it. Um, and that wasn't until like my fourth year in like at Central. So like I was certainly very late um, in the game, but I would say even though you have those feelings of uncertainty to speak to someone who you are like a little bit like, oh, they're so like, they know so much. Well, yeah, they do, but they've also been doing these things for a long time. So, you know, you have to think of it that way and sort of like um, create more of a, um, an idea that you know i 
I can speak to these professors because they are here to help me and guide me in my process um, through this, through my, the university. Um, and the second thing is that you really, if you're going to consider a career in science, really try to get in a lab or some kind of laboratory experience. That's like, when you see that on a resume, that's like, oh, good. Okay. You checked the first box. So now I will look at your application. Um, so, you know, that's something that you really, whatever that looks like, if it's at CMU or another institute or either like an internship or something like that at a, at somewhere outside of academia, laboratory experience is, is very crucial for that next step. So like I second that too, like get to know your faculty. Uh, I was always scared and very shy growing up. So it was very difficult for me to reach out and talk to people. But my third year, I think it was Dr. Linton. I reached out to him. He was really very helpful to me. He uh, got me on the right track of like, if I had questions or anything. I did research for him for my undergrad research project. And if I had questions for like CVs or cover letters before I graduated, he would send me examples and I'd go back and type and I'd send them back to him and he would just help me out. It's really good to have a faculty member that you can get resources from like Dr. And also gave me multiple good references for jobs that I interviewed when I first graduated and so did Phil. So I'd highly recommend using Dr. Linton and Phil if you're doing the microscopy major. Uh, just like talking to people, like being afraid to talk to someone that has like a PhD, like with my degree, my boss tells me like, just don't, just ignore that. Like most of them probably don't know everything about microscopes as you do. They probably just know their exper experiments that they're doing. Just don't, be, just ignore it. Just talk to them like it's a normal like conversation with them. Just don't take it personal or anything. He just, my boss told me for this job. So, but yeah, get to know your faculty. It's very helpful. I appreciate everything Dr. Linton has helped me with so far. And I still keep in touch with Dr. Linton every so often too. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Linton. Like something that now has crossed my mind that I would add, um, I don't know about everyone else here, but like I work in my, my field of public health is like really small, like the world is small. And I constantly run into people that I know all over the country. Um, so not only uh, keep networked with uh, your, your counterparts now, uh, but stay like positive relationships with as many people as possible. Don't burn bridges because uh, you're, you're going to run into those people again. Um, in my experiences anyway, it's almost a certainty. Laura, did you want to go next? Um, I don't really have a whole lot to add. That's, I mean, yes, to all that. <laughs> <laughs> Get in a lab, for sure. Ask to wash dishes if you have to. And then ask the person while you're washing dishes what they're doing. Yep. <laughs> um, and then other than touching on, you know, definitely a fan of joining a lab, don't be afraid to reach out to both professors and also the people around you while you're in a lab if you're happy to be there. Um, but to get outside of science, uh, I would also highly recommend uh, stepping out into things that put you in a public speaking role. Uh, myself, I was a resident assistant for CMU in Sachs Hall. Uh, during that time, I was able to constantly talk to people, work on my speaking skills. Um, that really helps me with my job today. Uh, now it's much more of a free flow uh, than having to really think about it. So can I add something to the networking part? So Laurel, will you explain how you, like we had this weird little pipeline to the lab that you were in. Um, like we had a bunch of people that worked there. How did, you got it through Erica? Oh, word of mouth? you're talking about BioWatch? Yeah. Yeah. So when I worked in there, this, the, so I watched the, my first job there where I was talking about how I asked everybody what they were doing. Um, when we worked with, um, the agents of bioterrorism doing PCR and stuff. Um, so 
that is a very, uh, like a first stepping stone kind of job. It's very routine. You do the same thing every day. So, um, so everybody that was graduating that was falling out of this. And now this was a time when Michigan was in a recession pretty, pretty bad. It was around the time the bubble burst, 2007, eight, a lot of that. It was really hard, difficult to get a job, um, especially with the state. I think they were on a hiring freeze and things like that. So um, we funneled a lot of graduates out of CMU in the mat in microbiology into this, I think. How, who was it? Erica, Mike? Um, oh, oh, Erica. Two, er- Erica. two Ericas. Two Ericas, yes. Erica Francis, and then my, and then me, and then Mike, and then who else? The other Erica, and then yes. well, and then um, uh, Kristen. Later, yeah, later. So we had all these people that. Yeah. There's this kind of strange connection from yeah. CMU to bioterrorism yeah. research. Right. Because it was, I mean, it's like kind of a short distance between Mount Pleasant and Lansing. You're in the same area. If you don't want to, you know, leave Michigan, it's kind of an easy jump to there. And then getting that experience. And it, BioWatch is still like this now. It's like you get the experience here and then people move on. They get, you know, first job experience and then they go on from there so can i ask a question that um uh maybe students have so networking is really important so how can you begin to network as an undergraduate that's challenging um initially i think you have to have somebody who's ushering you into that process. A faculty um, is usually, that's an easier way to get sort of like, maybe go to a conference, like, you know, that's one way to really um, make some initial contacts. But honestly, I think it's something that over time, like you sort of like accumulate these much more easily than you do as an undergraduate, just because you're in the beginnings of your career. So I definitely think you need some kind of like mentor to help make those introductions. You can do like dry introductions. Um, those sometimes can be a bit more challenging um, to foster a like meaningful relationship that is, you know, impactful. So I definitely think, you know, finding some kind of mentor that can help introduce you to their circle of network, that sort of helps you to then use that as your base and then expand from there. Mm-hmm. Or perhaps going to, you know, a careers workshop, like we have students here today, <laughs> and making those, fostering those networks and connections. Does anyone else have any suggestions for that process? I think you're right, right? leaning on people to to help make those first connections for you. Yeah, uh, so a huge thing that we have at CMU, I believe they're called RSOs still, um, but there are a bunch of different clubs that you can go to. I know there's a pre-med one, a dental one, there was a microscopy one at some point. Uh, this is a great way just to branch out and meet the students within your desired field for it. Uh, so it's also a great opportunity and then to go back um, in terms of what Freddie said, having a mentor that can help you reach out, going to conferences is a great way to start networking with people. Uh, and also start your LinkedIn early. Uh, a lot of jobs will immediately type in your name and go to your LinkedIn. Uh, if you could start updating that, you know, it doesn't have to be freshman year, but as you start getting closer to graduation, that's uh, a great time to look into your LinkedIn profile. Uh, and that allows you to also add people onto a network. So then you can reach out later on to see what they're doing. A lot of people post things, there's jobs for that site as well. Plus, it's a great opportunity there. Great advice. I think people have covered this pretty well throughout the conversation, but reiterating, like, like, yeah, that first job might be a little tougher and like leveraging that faculty member, right, their network and your peers um, that are going out. But then when you get that first job, I think Laurel really hit the uh, the nail on the head when she said, like, I can do that. What can I help you with? Right. Like showing that initiative and getting exposure into other areas in your company or organization. Um, so they are aware who you are. Right. Because one, those people uh, might be hiring someday 
in that organization or two, they leave that organization um, and go elsewhere. And uh, hey, uh, Laurel, uh, we have this job posting coming up and I want you to be aware of this. Um, and I will put in a good word for you with the hiring manager. Um, like is is hugely beneficial. So I, I think Brandon mentioned, right? Like just talking to people and getting some of that like exposure at those organizations as well. Just you know, there's like a lot of like little people skills that are just hugely beneficial to your long-term career. Uh, yeah. Just to say how much that pays off in terms of being able to talk to people, uh, the sales team at Zeiss um, that I am applying to right now, I would have not gotten an interview without them. Uh, all of them have PhDs. I myself have a bachelor's. Um, they typically prefer the PhD, but because I was highly recommended from their sales team, I was able to get in and actually get that interview. Too. So even for my job as since I'm an account manager and for high tech that's partnered with Zeiss, Michigan's a new territory, new state that they just added. So that's why I started the position back in January. I like don't know any like I have to build up the whole territory myself for my job. So I have to go out there, go on campuses like colleges every couple of days a week, go out there, walk the halls, get my name out there, pass out business cards to make those connections to get to know people and to like get our name out there too. So it's like a lot of like being an introduction to like freshmen, trying to like network around. So that's like what I'm doing since I'm new with my position, new new territory, got to get our name out there and everything. And it can be a little scary going up to people like some professors are just don't want to be bothered and, you know. <laughs> That's great. So it's one of the things I think is really great is, um, you know, there's a lot of students that don't under like don't really realize um, all the things you can do with a biology major. Um, and so we have, you know, people from industry and the state and in sales and, and a really wide variety of, of, of jobs. So, um, do you, um, if, were there, are there any other jobs that kind of maybe you have, you have, um, not necessarily thought about now, cause you're probably really happy in your current positions, but other things that you've thought about exploring other career paths. Or conversely here is you, 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 it was your direction to this. I want to work at a nonprofit or I want to work in a government lab or academic or commercial. Like, that's my goal. I'm here and I like it, but I wanted to get here. I ended up here or I went there and then came back to where I wanted. I honestly had no idea what I wanted to do when I left university. <laughs> um, right. Like, again, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Um, and right, I have a second kid coming already and I like, apparently I'm a grown up now. Um, so, um, I kind of like, feel like I fell into this career path in governments. Um, but I'm so happy that I'm here. Right. Again, with those, those initial interests that I had, um, and, uh, I'm, I'm not going to go anywhere anytime soon as you know, I've only been here six months and uh, I've had the opportunity to build out my entire team. So like I've got like 40, 40 team members um, that I'm actively building out right now. So I'm going to stay put for a while. Uh, when I was uh, a, a lower level manager, I told myself, why would anyone ever want to be a section manager? And now I'm a section manager um, and I'm telling myself, why would anyone want to be a division director? Um, <laughs> And we'll see where that goes. I would say that's pretty similar for my path. I don't, I can't say like in 2011, I'm exactly where I thought I would be exactly, but I know that I'm in the area that I've always been passionate about. And that has always been sort of like the leading or the guiding force that I've been using is like, okay, I like science. I like biology. I like microbes. I like microbiomes. I like microbiomes and other things. And then from there, I just find where I fit in. I would say like an industry, it's sort of expanded my idea of what I could do with my degree. 
just because before I was very much focused in the lab, but now I'm like in the lab, but I'm also talking to the business and marketing folks. I'm also talking to vendors and working with legal teams and like, you know, learning le legal lingo and like trying to like draft documents and then, you know, working with the clinical people and like trying to understand what's needed there. So I think as long as you have a passion for what you're interested in and then the willingness to learn new things, you always sort of find the right place for you. And if it's not right, then you have the skills to move on to do something else. I agree with Freddie too, because I knew I wanted to be in a lab, but then I just didn't realize like how I somehow just ended up in sales. And I actually really like being in sales. It's a really fun job. Like I just didn't expect it. I thought I was gonna be working in a lab for a long time, but no, I like sales and I'm gonna stay put for a long while. And they say like sales are good paying jobs too. Oh yeah, I can go next. Um, so right now I do currently love being an image specialist. I think it's a great opportunity to explore many different fields. Uh, like I said, I'm doing research on the side for one lab. I'm about to go into stem cell research as well, uh, hopefully for a fourth paper on that one. Um, but yeah, in terms of expanding past that, uh, I ended up falling in love when I came here with coding. Um, so now at Zeiss, working with the Zen software, I will be able to uh, start interacting with that side of the interface for it, uh, which is a great opportunity for me. Um, but yeah, so I hope to eventually kind of figure out where I want to stay at. Um, well, for me, um, like I said before, um, I didn't even really know that this, we had a state public health lab. Now that could, it's probably different now, given the potent, the climate that we're in right now with the pandemic, we've kind of been thrust into the spotlight, whether we like it or not. Um, and everyone knows that there's a state public health lab. <laughs> um, but I had no idea. So I didn't, I guess I, I didn't know there was one. So just happened to find my way there. But um, it's, it's a very interesting place to be in public health. Um, but I will say, I just want to mention this, is that um, in the last few, the last probably 10-ish years, we've seen a huge change in um, technology that's come up really fast. So we've had a whole group of people, like 10, 12 people that we've hired in the last few years. Yes, due to the, the pandemic, but not necessarily due to the pandemic, um, that are data scientists. They're, that's specifically what they do. Um, they they take all our our from the what the wet side of the lab that we all the data that we generate through sequencing and they put it through pipelines and they work on the data and they make sense of it. So if you are not a hands on lab person, there's still a place for you in the lab in the data science field that is huge growing exponentially right now. Yeah, I, I we we just heard that from our um, data analytics was huge when we met with this group is in the, the separate industry board a few weeks ago. So um, definitely time to um, if you've got an elective even available in your schedule, definitely a time to to jump into um, some of these, you know, programming courses or uh, data data based coursework. I think that's that'll really set you apart, perhaps um, going forward. Yeah, the data part we're just starting here now uh, a new data science uh, major with several minors. So it's from the new Department of Statistics and Actuary Science starting, I think, this fall. Yeah, and very then, exciting. Yeah, and then there's uh, going to be like eight or nine different minors to go along with it. So you do the data science part, and then you get minors, and we're going to do a biological analytics one. There's a health professions and a business. So it's just, you know, learning how to do 
use data and then learn how to specialize in an area or two if you want. But yeah, data, we got you're right. We got that with the last group too. It's like data, data, data. Yeah, it's a big thing. Like, I mean, even in industry, that's like we have all these ways to produce all this data, but like someone needs to analyze it. And that's a whole person's job, essentially. So, you know, if you're not necessarily into like the handling liquids and cultures and stuff, data analysis is certainly an area where everyone needs someone who can analyze data, be it with R scripts or creating your own, you know, coding and things like that. That's all part of the science field uh, today. And it's, it's essential at this point. Yeah, well, um, it is five o'clock. So I don't want to keep our panelists over. Thank you so much for your time. This has been so informative. And, um, and uh, um, if, if anyone wants, we can, we can do a round of applause. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming. And um, it's really great to hear our our alumni doing such fantastic, exciting things, and I'll be looking up your papers. <laughs> so I'd like to add one thing, and you guys probably don't, I don't, you probably don't realize it as former students, but it really, really makes us happy to see where you guys are today, to see your successes that, I mean, really, really. So, so thanks you guys for going out there and doing the work, so. Yeah, thanks for giving us opportunities. That's, you know, without those, I don't think any of us would be there so or be here. So it starts somewhere and it starts in CMU, who thought, in the middle of Michigan that usually most people that I talk to don't know where it's at. So. Well, well, thanks everybody. Have a mm -hmm. great night. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, you too. Thanks, you guys. Thanks.